Hello and welcome back to another Space Engineers Showcase video. In today's video we're looking at another atmospheric miner and this one is called the Hornet 01 atmospheric miner which is this lovely thing right here. So it's a very small very compact miner with everything you would expect from ejectors to easily configurable sorters and of course it all comes in a very short shape allowing you to store it in a very small hangar. Pressing F10 and finding it in the spawn menu, the Hornet is only 516 small blocks using the Decorative Block DLC pack and the Sparks of the Future DLC pack. So what we're going to do is have a quick look around the outside, then we'll give it a little test on the Mars-like surface and see how it handles. So at the very front here, this is what we get. Got ourselves a industrial cockpit and that's been surrounded by some atmospheric thrusters. We've got two spotlights to help light up the darkness and just below them, of course, are our drills to collect up all our resources. As we move around the side, we're going to see some lovely orange blocks just to add a bit of decoration and to hide up the important internals inside, such as the conveyor blocks that can be easily damaged. Continuing along over to here, we're going to see some more atmospheric thrusters and of course the first of a few medium cargo containers. On the side, we've got an interior light just to help spot it in the darkness and to give your position away to your enemies. Moving all the way around to the back here, this is what we get. We've got some more interior lights and some more atmospheric thrusters. We've got six small ones, one large one to help push us around and get our resources to wherever they need to go. And that's all been surrounded by some lovely rounded blocks to make sure they're nice and protected. Coming up and above, we're going to see the tops of our large atmospheric thrusters to help keep us off the ground and afloat while we're nice and heavy. Along the middle or the spine of the ship, we've got a bunch of conveyors and small cargo containers for some additional place to pack some ore, along with some letter blocks to spell out the name of the ship. So we've got Hornet going along the middle and 01 at the top and the bottom. If we continue along, we'll see some nice block work just going all the way around the word Hornet. Then moving towards the front, there's some more large atmospheric thrusters. And then we can see the conveyor going down that would eventually link up to our drills and cockpit, along with a blinking light at the very front here just for some additional decoration. Coming all the way down and underneath, we'll see the bottoms of our large atmospheric thrusters and the start of a few ejectors to get rid of all the unnecessary stone or anything else you don't want. You might want stone at the beginning of the game, but then again, you probably won't be able to build this at the start of the survival mode. Yes, continuing along over to here, we got ourselves a connector to unload and load up any goods we need. We can see even more small cargo containers and a bunch of batteries to keep this thing power, along with four reactors to power up this thing in case they need recharging. Moving along all the way over to here, even more ejectors, a sneaky little camera to help connect up our connector. And over to here, we can see some atmospheric thrusters with a few more sneaky batteries in there. With that all done and out of the way, that is pretty much it for the outside. It's a very short and sweet ship and it gets straight to the point. Now what we can do is get into my character and we can play around with what this does. So number one on our hotbar is to lock or unlock our connector underneath. And number two is to view the camera to help connect it up. Number three is to take control over our drills so we can start drilling or we can right mouse button to make a big hole. Number four is to turn on and off our interior lights all the way around the ship so we can press that and then now turn off. Number five is for our ore detector on and off and six is for our antenna on and off. Number seven is for our ejectors underneath the ship. So if I was to go and let's say collect up a few bits of ore, so just slam myself into the ground here and start collecting stuff. Oh, I'm going to tip over. Oh, that's not good. Pretending like that didn't happen, we're going to carefully collect up stone this time and we're just going to load ourselves up a little bit like so. Now we can come up to here press number seven and we'll start ejecting them out. I've of course set up the sorter to eject out the stone because I don't need it and it will very slowly eject itself out and onto the ground. Number eight is for our reactors on and off and number nine is for our thrusters all the way around the ship so we can switch that off when we don't need it and we just leave everything else important being powered. Switching that on and coming to tab number two we then got our batteries which is auto and to recharge. Lifting off from the ground and bearing in mind I am purely on battery power currently because there's no uranium in the reactor, we have about one to two hours worth of power while sitting idle 
and hovering. When I start to move around, we will drop down to around about 35 minutes to 30 minutes, depending on what I'm doing with the thrusters. Flying in a straight line will be about 35. Trying to move myself around, we will drop down. I think I saw about 20 minutes of power down there, but it's not too bad considering it's pure batteries. So now we can do a quick little thruster test and see how this thing handles. So moving forwards, this is what we get. We've got a nice amount of speed from there, especially considering we're going to be full up with resources and will be quite heavy, so it's always useful to have that amount of thrust. Coming to a stop, we are a bit more slower and it could be a bit more problematic when we're much, much heavier, but it's not too bad and we can always do a 180 to slow ourselves down. Moving left and moving right, we've got a nice amount of speed there. There we go, and then going down, and then going up, there we go, going up feels like it's faster than everything else, but that is perfect for a mining ship, so you do not wish to have a low amount of thrusters for going up, otherwise you're going to come crashing down when you're full up and all your cargo containers are nice and heavy. Wheeling my mouse around, we got a little bit of weight on there, but it is a bit floaty, but that doesn't really matter because we're not full up of resources. And that's what we're going to do right now. So we'll do a little collection and see how this thing handles after. And here we are. I've just finished up mining and we're nice and heavy. Coming over to here and showing my cargo containers. There's all these small ones all filled up. And if we come down to the mediums, or I'll have to search for the mediums. There we go. We've got 10k in each. So we've got quite a lot of resources on here. How does it change with the controls? We're still nice and fast going forwards. Stopping as well, it doesn't appear to have changed too much. In fact, it feels like it's helped it stop faster. Going left and right is unchanged. And moving my mouse around, we do have a lot more weight on here compared to what we had before. It's a bit more floatier beforehand and much like a small fighter. But now we really do suit this type of ship. Yes, just for a quick demonstration for the mining, we'll come over to this side right here and just eject out what I've just collected. And we'll start mining and see what we can do. So coming all the way over to here, in fact, let's just slam ourselves into the ground. Like this, we're now going to start to make a little tiny hole through this mountainside. In fact, we might be able to go straight through it with this thing. We've got enough clearance around the ship and we're nice and compact, so we should be able to just make a nice little tunnel. And we could even dig out a base if we wanted to. Yes, that is with the rock clearing and not collection. Now let's switch to the collection and see how that changes. So going forwards, this is what we're getting with that. We are very slowly digging away there. We should be able to just keep on going. Should be enough clearance above and below us to go. I'm at a bit of a wonky angle, but we should be able to jam ourselves straight through here. And it looks like we're going to be able to keep going forwards with how this thing has been set up. Yes, it's a very nice little mining ship if you are looking for something that is very compact and very easy to use. And it seems like it'll be relatively easy to build early on in survival mode, barring of course the reactors and getting yourself uranium. But it seems to function well without it. Yes, that is it for this little ship. There'll be a link to it in the description below if you do wish to play around for it yourself. And I'll be back with another video somewhat soon. Bye bye.